weekly update time, guys. Episode 30 of 2017, and we are back in the New York studio. And heck, we're back in New York. Last weekend was our HK Live NL event, and that took place at the EMCR Rosenberg Club just outside of Rotterdam at a gorgeous location. The only thing that turned out to not be so gorgeous was the weather we got for the entire weekend. couldn't believe it. It rarely happens. Apparently, you know, all the people from the Netherlands are telling me it's very rare we get weather like that, but we were dealing with 20 to 30 mile an hour winds all weekend long, periods of just torrential downpours where you couldn't really do anything. So uh, of the, we had more than a hundred registered pilots. I'm not sure half of that ended up showing up. I mean, who would show up to, you know, weather like that and risk their big models. But uh, for the people who did show up, we wanted to thank you so much. I wanted to thank Tom over at the club, all the volunteers there for putting on a great show in spite of the weather. I mean, every chance we had to fly, whenever the, there would be little breaks in the weather, sometimes the wind would go down to maybe 20, 15 miles an hour, and we were getting a chance to fly some of our models. Mostly for us, as far as the foamy goes, we did a lot of uh, EF Extra gaggles. We must have had 10, 12, 15 EF Extras at the club, uh, all random people who own them and the ones that we brought. So we were doing a lot of the flying, a lot of those models, uh, the Excaliburs. We had a lot of people there flying those. You know, anything that does decent in the wind, we tried to put up. And of course, Tundras and the Bush Mule. People were loving those when you got those big flaps flying Tundras around. Always a good time, but you know, we made the most out of what we could with that show. Obviously, due to the weather, we did our candy drop. There were tons of kids there, especially on the Sunday. The weather started to turn out just as the show was ending. The weather started getting better, but we got a chance to do candy drops, both kid candy drops and adult, uh, adult candy drops, but their candy was mostly servos and uh, receivers, things like that. But overall, it wasn't a loss. I mean, it was still a lot of fun, our third annual show, and we're looking forward to doing it again next year, and hopefully the weather will cooperate when we do. So we came back to the studio. We only got in Thursday uh, is when we're recording this. We took the last two days off because me and Alex didn't get in until late Monday night um, after uh, just a long two flights to get uh, back from the Netherlands and we just started doing some prep work because obviously guys the bush mule was on pre-order last week while we were in the Netherlands it dropped and Steve uh, last week was flying they were flying three of them out there and you know let you know about that so these things are on the water they're on their way to warehouses and we got to get started working on the product videos so we just want to make sure these were set up bound up because next week we're gonna be out with these ourselves getting uh, product footage and hopefully that video will be coming very very soon when these things finally release but we wanted to tell you this week now that the hk live and element is over don't forget guys we're going back to the uk on september 9th it's a one-day show but it's a much larger show than the nl event was the nl event was mostly just focused on planes whereas the uk event even though it's one day it's held at the historic elmset airfield it'll be the fourth annual uh, HK Live UK show. We're going to have drone racing there. We're going to have car racing tournaments. We're going to have uh, obviously tons of model flying. You could bring any model you want, any size you want. It doesn't matter who makes it or what. You could come there and fly it. And then we're also going to have some scale, real full scale aircraft coming. I know we've got an ME 108 that will be flying there and as well as some other big models. It is a large show and we hope you guys, especially everyone in the UK or if you're somewhere in in the EU and you want to drive over there, it'll be well worth it for that one big day of the show. I'll be over there myself and uh, I can't wait for it. It should be super exciting. And definitely look out for a full video next week, either Monday or Tuesday. And um, we're gonna go over in detail everything that's gonna go on at the HK Live UK show. So definitely uh, stay tuned for that. And you can also click here. We do have our registration page open. So if you know you wanna go without hearing any of what's gonna happen and you just wanna sign up now, you can do that right there in the description. And again, we just can't wait to get that show going. So guys, that's what, basically what was going on here this week. We'll be back in full swing for a full week of work next week. And we'll be back. Obviously, you'll see some of this and maybe some other things that we'll be flying next week. Because again, guys, I told you that snowball just got pushed off the mountain. A lot of these planes that uh, you've heard about are going to be coming soon. And a lot of planes you haven't heard about are going to be coming soon as well. Uh, this year is far from over. And we plan on ending it in a big way. So guys, that'll do it for us here 
in the New York studio. Again, HK Live UK, September 9th at the Elmset Airfield, just outside of Ipswich. Uh, we hope to see you there. Now let's send it over to Australia and see what they have going on. See you next week. Hi guys, Simon here, weekly update time. Um, this week we're actually just down here. We've, uh, we've got Richard down there and we've got Nick, uh, but we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Um, what we're actually doing at the moment is we're just testing out a couple of new items that we have and you can check out the new items page. These will be listed in, on the new items page. But it's just some accessories for the Mavic. This is the PG Tech sunshade holder. Just a simple little system of rubberized straps that go around your iPad and it hold, holds it very securely in place. And then this is the iPad holder from PG Tech as well. Really, really good setup. You can move the orientation of this a little bit. You can put it to the side. So just demonstrating it without the iPad on there, but it's just basically a simple clamp system, so you can clamp down your iPad. That's a really, really secure fitting on that. Now on the front of the Mavic there, which you'll be able to see, is I've actually got one of the filters on the camera. So we're actually selling this as the filter pack, so it comes with all the different filters in one little pack, which is a great little system. We also sell them for the Phantom 4. So anyway, I'm just going to put this up and have a bit of a flight around and um, enjoy the footage. So it's with this filter on here, a really, really nice um, image that I'm getting. And with this sunshade, it really is blocking out a lot of the light that I would normally be having reflecting on the iPad screen. So it's a great little setup for the iPad to be held into the controller. And with this sunshade, it's, uh, it's brilliant. Now, as I mentioned before, we do have Richard and Nick down with me here today. Now what we're actually going to have is we're going to have Richard flying the Falcor. Now Richard has about 10 years experience. 10 years experience not. <laughs> he literally <laughs> has not flown a drone before so we actually wanted him to to give this a bit of a test and from a total novice's um, point of view and see if he can actually fly this around. So it should be fine. You're in good hands here. Oh man, I'm sure I am. I feel safe already. <laughs> <laughs> You're nervous? Oh, mate, slightly, slightly, you know, just don't want to crash it, but I'm sure I will. Someone will be here to save the day. <laughs> so the Falcor is a um, HD digital downlink, um, FPV digital downlink. So with the Falcor HD, it actually has ultrasonic sensors underneath it. So basically a novice can really fly this without any experience at all and be able to just scream around the park with very little chance of actually crashing and obviously you can crash into things but the ground is the the hardest thing not to crash into and with this sort of system we can put this in shield mode and it basically rises up to about a meter and a half and you can literally just fly it around with one stick if you get into trouble there's a little panic button on the side where it literally just stops itself and then just comes in to land so i'll explain all that to richard in a sec and we can get him up in the air and see how he goes now small movements work best look out people all right Good. Bring it left a little bit. Beautiful. A little bit of left, a little bit of forward. Forward, 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 forward. You're a rock star. All right, now I want you to hit the panic button now. Hold it down, that's it. I'll flick it over the arm and you're ready to go. All right. We going? Yep. <clears throat> Go for it. Full stick forward. <clears throat> What's it like? Uh, it feels pretty cool. Just trying to get used to the fact that, you know, I'm not actually looking at it, I'm looking at a screen. Yep. Um, so trying to get my bearings. <laughs> How close am I to the ground? It feels like I'm really close to the ground though. You're about a metre, metre and a half away from the ground. Okay. It's perfect. You're not crashing at all. How do you feel about going through the goalpost? There's a the goalpost, okay. You can do it through the goalpost, just nice and easy. That's the world's biggest air gate that you just went oh, through. Mate. Hey, not bad for your very first flight with it. It's really smooth and sensitive. Like the minute you touch it, it just moves. It's pretty cool. What it actually does, it's a little bit of mixing. So as you're actually banking, it's actually yawing at the same time. Yeah. So it's doing everything basically for you in this shield mode. So that was Richard's very first flight with a multi-rotor. <laughs> and I tell you what, you didn't do a bad job, really. You can take the glasses off now. Um, what do you think? It was pretty cool. Smooth, easy to handle. The picture was crystal clear which was really good. Yep. No, I had fun, it was really good, it was really exciting. So, this is a perfect setup for someone that really um, wants to get into some, some either some drone racing or just some drone flying. It's always, uh, it's a bit of a hard learning curve when you've got the ground that you can always hit. But with the Falcor, it's beautiful. It really does handle the, um, the very first flights and just to get your 
your sticks and things going, and it's a beautiful yeah. HD link. What was yeah. the vision like? The vision was really clear, it was really awesome. It was actually yeah. easy to see. Um, but yeah, like I said, it was smooth, easy to handle, um, no issues. And let me tell you, if that was a normal multi-rotor, yeah. you wouldn't have lasted that no, long in the air. <laughs> it would have come back in a few <laughs> pieces. So, yep, for your very first flight, you did excellent. Beautiful. Yep, so now Richard's had a bit of a fly-in shield mode. I'm just going to take it up and put it into acro mode and uh, have a bit of a fly around and enjoy the footage. So you can plug this into uh, clean flight and adjust all the rates. At the moment, these rates are a little bit high for me, but you can adjust that if you wanted to. Really, really enjoy this HD stuff. It's really, really clear. You can just see every single leaf, every branch. Okay, so that's it for this week's weekly. Um, Richard, Nick and myself, and until next time, see you later.